Good morning and thank you for dropping by to hang out with us here on the couch. Boy, do we have a good one for you today. Today's show is a little bit different than our norm. Several of you have asked how I dial in the tones for the songs I'm teaching on my Boss Katana amplifier. Today's video hopes to answer that and more. So if you have a Boss Katana and you're not yet proficient in dialing in tones, or if you're considering purchasing one, this show is for you. Today I'll be trying to dial up Jerry Cantrell's lead tone for the song Nutshell, which is the next tutorial I'll be making. I'll post a link to that video in this one. And if you do have any interest in owning a Boss Katana, I'll also post an affiliate link to Boss's Amazon store in the description. Let's jump right in. So I'm super happy to have you along and looking over my shoulder today as I try to dial up a tone for uh, Jerry Cantrell's lead tone for the song Nutshell, which is the next tutorial that I'm going to be doing. If you're familiar with that song, most of the song is acoustic, but there is a uh, lead part. There's also a solo. Both of those are played on electric guitar. So I need to find the tone or get as close as I possibly can to that sound. Um, within the amp here, um, Boss Katanas are, are fantastic amps in that there's a lot of control just built into the panel and you can control things, you can save things right from there. However, to really get into the nuts and the bolts and the brain of the amplifier, you need a computer and you hook up that computer via a USB cable. Uh, it's not your typical USB cable, it's a USB type B. Um, my cable is a type B to type C because I have a C type connector here. If you don't have a C connector on your computer, they do make USB-B to USB-A, which is the normal USB connector. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Best Buy, which is where I got mine. Um, and, and sometimes, like, um, I have a, a, an Airstep Katana control pedal. That came with its own cable, too, which also works for this. So, anyway, the next thing that you need to do is you need to download, if you've not already, Tone Studio for Katana in whatever version you have. Mine is a Mark II, so you want to make sure that you have the right drivers and the right software for the model that you have. There's a, a regular Katana, and then Mark II, and now there's also a Generation 3, which has just came out. Um, by the way, Katana Mark IIs now are fantastic value. They're incredibly low priced for what they are and for what they do. Uh, if you're interested in that and that, that kind of savings, I will have um, an affiliate link in the description of this video if you uh, are considering owning one. Uh, if, you, if you purchase that through that link, I will get a small uh, affiliate commission at no extra cost to you. So, so I appreciate your support in that way if you decide to do that. I'm also gonna start a screen capture recording here which is not something I do very frequently, so hopefully I do it correctly. And um, looks like that started. So hopefully as you can see here on the screen capture, I always start with mine in the panel mode. Uh, mine has four channels because it's a 50 watt, 100 watt versions have eight channels. Uh, mine has four plus the panel. So I always start out on panel. I have um, my equalization, the, the bass, the mid, and the treble are always set at 12 o'clock. They're, they're straight up 50% on everything. Everything else I pretty much start out turned off. Uh, when I'm trying to capture a tone, I'll also do some research. I do as much reading as I can and I, I listen very closely with my ears. But in reading, for example, this tone, um, I went back and, and researched what amp, what effects, what settings Jerry Cantrell might have used when he recorded this on the, the Jar of Flies album. Um, well, the article that I found said he couldn't remember exactly, but it was most likely a Fender Twin Reverb amp, and also most likely a Bogner Fish preamp. 
So a Fender Twin Reverb is going to be a sparkly, clean sound, typically. That's what they're known for. And a Bogner Fish preamp, which are no longer being manufactured. They started in the late 80s, and I think they ran all the way through maybe 93. Those were four-channel preamps that had eight 12AX7 power, or, or preamp tubes in them. Those are the tubes that give you the fuzzy, warm, uh, saturated distortion type sound. That amp had uh, four different channels. The first channel was called Country and it was sparkly clean like a sparkly clean Fender. Um, and then three different ascending levels of distortion. Um, I can't remember what all they were. The, the, the most saturated one was a brown channel. So to emulate the Eddie Van Halen type brown sound. So with all that in mind, plus um, listening to the song, what we're going to do, and what I normally do, is I normally start with the amplifier on the clean setting here. And my gain is straight up 50%, my volume is straight up 50%. I usually set my master volume on about 25%, which, which you won't see here. Um, anywhere on the tone studio but it's it's on the panel of the amp so the tone that I have right now is just a, a real almost quiet basic simple clean sound with no effects and that gives us our foundation from which we can start building I've also read that Jerry Cantrell's tone he usually has the bass set at about 50% um, and the mids and the treble are usually 60 to 70 percent. So we're going to turn up the mid to 60. We're going to turn up the treble to 60. And I'm going to turn up my volume a little bit here too so we can hear it a little bit better. If I have to, I'll go to the master volume, but I don't really want to do that until later. So that's um, a, a good basic tone to start with, 60-60 on the mid and the treble and 50 on the bass. Once we get some um, gain built into it, we can adjust those if we need to. We can also go in here and do a, a parametric or a graphic equalizer to help with that too. So my booster, I'm going to use a Marshall Governor pedal for my boost pedal for my overdrive um, and the reason I'm going to use that I originally thought that I would use like maybe a blues driver or something um, but in in reading about that Bogner fish preamp I want to go ahead and use the the governor pedal and I'm gonna start out I'm just gonna barely turn on the boost up here maybe about 10 percent and we'll put the drive let's say about 60 and we'll see how that sounds Boy, that's already sounded sounded pretty good. Oops. Some of the things that I listen for when I listen to the song, I, I, I'm listening for the the bass, the mid rings, and the treble, of course. But I'm also listening to how exact or precise the notes are, how they spill over each other. Are they are they muddy? Are they dirty? Are they super pristine and and clean and well defined. I'm trying to listen to all that and then trying to make all that work uh, through what we have to work with here within the amp. So let's go a little bit more on our Marshall Drive. Let's go up to like 75 on this. liking that a lot. Um, we can change our tone and our, our bottom end here too depending on what we're going to do. Let's see how it chugs there. I think we might go with, let's try 65 on the treble. Turn up the mid a little bit too. 
Okay. He also uses on his pedal board, he uses a Boss Digital Delay um, pretty frequently, although you can tell there's obviously delay used um, quite a bit in this solo, but I don't know what type because it didn't say in the article. But I have seen videos uh, showing his pedal board, his rig run down. Uh, there is definitely a Boss Digital Delay on that pedal. So assuming maybe that's what he used to, let's go to our delay. Let's go to a digital delay. Let's turn it up a little bit. Need some reverb. And our reverb. Try maybe a room to start with. He's playing some of the licks um, from the solo, so that's also. Um, something that I think is pretty important is to, to try to learn the song that you're trying to emulate to start with so you can see how it sounds as you go through here playing what you're going to need to play. Um, I also like this solo switch. It gives us a little more volume and a little bit more depth in using that. I'm going to turn down my overall volume down to 60. We're getting there. Um, we also have a, a, a presence knob here that we can adjust. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. And we can also change our um, speaker cab simulation modern vintage or deep um, mine is kind of preset to vintage he he uses celestian um, greenbacks 30, 30 watt speakers typically in his cabinets but let's try them all <laughs> Control over here, which I typically like that on. We have three different flavors to try. Yeah, I definitely like the, 
the green, green flavor best. And then there's also a contour switch here, which for some reason this one is always a little more difficult for me to work. I think that's my track pad. My track pad. Sorry for all the mistakes in, in, in the playing. I'm more worried about the tone than I am the notes that I'm hitting. I'll, uh, I'll link that video when it's completed to this video and you'll see the end results. Um, so hopefully that solo will sound a lot better than what I'm doing here. after the Seconds feedback. I'm going to adjust that up a little bit. That might be a little too much. Back to forty. closer and closer all the time. I think I'm going to go down just a little bit on my delay time. Let's try that. Try to 
turn up the level though. on the level for sure. Back it back now. except our tone is not quite there. A um, couple other things to keep in mind. One is your noise suppression. Always make sure that that is on. Um, your threshold. See how that's kind of noisy right there? Less noisy. Not noisy. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then there's also an EQ right here, parametric or graphic. Let's try the graphic. I'm going to try to add a little bit of just a, a single bass frequency and see what that does. <laughs> to our booster we can change our bottom end if we want that thicker that's too much that's probably 
too much to... adjust our tone here if we want to. And um, you've got other effects here too, obviously. Um, pretty much every effect the boss made there so if you want to try some chorus or maybe a little bit of compression uh, let's see let's try just a little compression see what that does don't like that at all that's it chunky for me so I'm gonna go down five let's try plus ten okay I think I like it I think that I'm at a spot where in my mind it kind of matches what I hear on the record so now I want to write it and I'm gonna write it to one of the channels here um, that I'm not using which right now channel B or channel 2 B so that's like really channel 4 um, I'm not using that was the clean tone for for the inner Sandman video I did which I, I wasn't real real happy with I didn't spend enough time on it so I'm going to write it to that channel. So I click the right button. I want to go to channel 2B. I click right. Oops, I forgot to change the title. Um, so you can call it whatever you want here. So I'm going to call it Nutshell Lead. that's just about perfect thank you so much for joining us today here on the couch I hope today's video was helpful and informative if it was please give me a thumbs up down below as always I would encourage you to pick Jesus and I hope to see you back here again very soon right here on the couch